Okay, let's uh, get started. Um, so last time we started to look at some example about how to define a class in C++. And the reason we want to have this concept called class, so every single language construct, like a class, for example, has a purpose. They want to facilitate programmer to accomplish something which will help them to do either modeling or help them to do software development. Um, in this case, a class, has multiple purposes. So even though I talk about object-oriented uh, principle, such as data abstraction, polymorphism, uh, inheritance and encapsulation. So we will look at uh, polymorphism and inheritance much later, but we're going to see more and more about data abstraction and encapsulation via the concept called class. So essentially, I like to draw a picture that looks like this, which shows that, okay, there is an object called box. This is just an example. It could be an uh, object or class called person. could be a object or class called car. So there's this kind of abstraction about what is the target concept we would like to model and implement. And then we start to think about, well, how do we actually be able to define what kind of information we need to include in the class? So in this case, you can see that I, I, I draw the picture, which is a circle, and then has this three entrance. So essentially, this is the concept called encapsulation. I mean, encapsulation has multiple way to implement. It's, it's actually more complicated than this, but this is one type of encapsulation we try to uh, realize. In fact, the whole class today, I'm going to dedicate to this class box today. So class box has multiple methods. We call it, this is called member function, which means that you cannot directly access to the inside of the object. You have to, um, go through the designated um, ports for you to interact with the object. That's sometimes we call the view, sometimes we call the interface to the object. Oh, by the way, you, you see me using the term class and uh, object, but they're, they're different, but they are related. So class is essentially the design, the spec for we to create the object. That's why, the object is really the instance while the class is the design itself, okay? Um, the relationship you will see more when we, as we go along uh, this, this order. But let's start with this. So you can see that this is a class or, or an object that you have an interface and you have some internal variable. And of course it's abstraction because it's, instead of for you to say a lot of things about the concept box or, or a cube or a, a ball, that now this design, the whole thing, give you an abstraction about what this uh, data type or what this entity you try to uh, design and improve. I mean, this is somewhat similar to some of the construct you might be familiar with. I know I have like a two or three different kind of background. This, classroom. Some of you know C already. This is similar to struct. 
Some of you actually took uh, Java before this class. So Java, in, in fact, is a, arguably, is a better design actually the length that C++. Okay, it's, that, that's a long story. I'm not going to uh, go into detail, but you also have, um, some of you are actually learning from Python. In fact, Python is also after the language. You can also define the similar things in Python as well. Okay, so that's the data abstraction. It provides a abstract um, digital representation for the real world object you really want to deal with. So you can see that, I mean, of course, this is not going to be a standard answer. So what is the best way to represent that real world object in a programming language? That's by itself is a big issue that we, it takes experience and takes how you're going to use it to, to learn that. Okay, that, that's okay. But the other thing which I want to emphasize is the word encapsulation. So encapsulation, meaning that, okay, I have things internal about inside of the box or inside of the human. Let's say I define a, an object called uh, class person. So this class person maybe represent the mental state of me as a person object. So encapsulation means that I don't want you to know my internal state. I mean, sometimes I do, I mean, but for most of the case, that's my private information. So I want to encapsulate, even though I'm actually extremely angry or extremely happy, but as an instructor, I become a hypocrite. When I come here, I hide all my feeling, hide all my emotion, and I try to be professional. That, that's kind of an encapsulation. And there is a multiple purpose about encapsulation. And it's so important that we try to enforce this principle in a programming lecture. Number one, we want to hide all the unnecessary detail. So a lot of things, I just give you this interface. Remember, I emphasize the public part. That's the interface I want to provide whoever wants to interact with the object. The object as a person, the object as a box. You actually interface with that interface without knowing what's the detail inside that boundary. And that, that's number one is simplify a lot of communication between that object. And also it hide a lot of secret you want to hide. I mean, think about this. This object was designed by company A. And that company A actually has their intellectual property inside that object. They implement some special tricks. And they want to hide that detail inside when they want to release their product to their customer who want to use this object. That's a very legitimate way of thinking about what I want to protect that internal detail. Okay, so there are two things about the object-oriented here as we talk about. Number one is data abstraction. Number two is encapsulation. They encapsulate such that we only see the interface when you actually interact with that object. Okay. Okay, I'm going to start to give you some example. Um, so I just finished all my lecture today, which is basically just talk about the concept before I move into the real code. Uh, what's any question about what I just said about the first two of the object and the principle, data abstraction and uh, encapsulation? Yes, please. So when we talked about the interface, it says we have Mm -hmm. We don't know the number where it's just, you know, uh, going inside, and then we we'll find out about that. Okay, that's one of the activities, the other one is one key. But before that, if we just define them as a class, somebody who will have reached them, they don't know anything about what is inside of them. We just will see that the topic of this is then the open class. Right. In fact, lens. Width and height are not even in the interface. The interface I will show you is something else, just compute the volume of this object. We don't even see that. You don't even, you don't, that that's an internal. Uh, so maybe internal, I don't even have that. So that, that's, that's the encapsulation. 
Good question. Okay. Any other question? Okay. So with your textbook, um, you already see I shared the link in the syllabus. Um, you will give the access to every single programming example in your textbook. There's a link to that. So one of the example, let me just show you, if you go to either using GitHub or using a terminal window, that this is a, the, the primary directory for that, uh, for, for code. And this particular one is, I think it's chapter 11, sorry. Yeah, it's chapter 11. And under chapter 11 is multiple exercise. I'm actually looking at exercise 11, 0, a Okay, before I go to the detail, I just want to tell you that this is very useful information because in learning programming language and its concept, it's important to get yourself dirty. So I, I really encourage you to go there whenever we go to the textbook, go to the example. At the end of the day, you have to try it yourself. To try to compile this program. I will tell you how to compile the program and to run the program. And then to actually modify the program, then you will really learn the concept. So the, the program are all there. And we have a uh, mandatory uh, part of the course. It's called small program submission. And I will explain that a little bit later about how to do maybe using a video or using uh, one of the discussion sessions to kind of force you to do a lot of those, all right? All right, so let's let's look at this directory. This directory has uh, three files. One is called box.h, one is called box.cpp. And then there is a program called ex1101a. Okay, let me first just tell you what are those three programs. So the box.cpp and box.h is the class definition for the object box. And EX1101A is the driver, is the test program for that class. So you define a class, but the class is by itself, it's not doing anything. So inside the driver, which is you will see the main program, is going to uh, create an object, and then it's going to call the object, it's going to print the result. Let's, let's actually look at EX. Let's look at this program first. You know what? I will use Emacs because it gave me a nice color. Ah, okay. So this is this is all it has. You can see that that's a driver. Um, okay. The the thing is that in the preprocessor is include the box.h is include that file that's included in the same directory that basically include the um, the, the box class. And then this is your, um, you probably know for those of you who have done programming in C, you know this is main is the entrance of the whole program. And inside the program, you see the first line is you actually, this is the class name called box. You actually create an object called first box. And when you create an object, later we'll see you're going to provide some. Um, constructor and constructor needs three uh, argument and that's that's what we call bracket initialization which I will cover that later is you using the syntax to, to provide the initialization value for that constructor this is called box this is called bracket initialization in fact this is only available after like 2011 so if you're using C++ compiler for 2011 this will not work. You will get a syntax error. But if you use a compiler um, after 2011, then it will work. I'll, I'll tell you those, those tedious difference, which is make a programmer more headache, but that's okay. If, you're, if you choose to use computer uh, to have headache, is is on, okay? All right, the, that, that's you putting a box. The first line, you just define class, and define a variable name. That variable name represents an object. So this is uh, the class. 
the type. You can think about class as a type. And, and then data type. And then this is the object name. And then this is just initialization variable using some convention called bracket initialization. And then what you do is that you define another variable called first box volume. And first box volume, look at the type, is double. It's a double precision floating point. Okay, it's a, it's a double and the first box. And then look at the initialization again. The initialization of that um, double is actually calling the member function of the object you just created. So you can see that is actually the way you call it. Now you see that the first line, the earlier line is create the object. Now I'm going to call a particular member function within the object that's actually first box dot voila. Object dot member function name, I actually call that function. And that function obviously from here is going to return a double. And that double is going to use to actually set the variable uh, first box, yeah, first box volume. And then after that, you use this uh, C++ way of doing printf. So it's called uh, stdc out. And uh, I mean, if you write, uh, sorry, C program, you sometimes remember to say include stdlib.h stdio.h, remember that? That's, that's essentially an object-oriented way of representing that two line. So using std as a, as a in fact, it's a class name, column, column to a function you try to call. And, and this part is just print out, volume of the box object is this variable. You just print the result. Okay, so this is the, the first program I want to show you. Three lines, first create an object, call the member function of that object, and then you print the result. That's the three lines. Any question at this moment? Yes, please. Yes, I will show you. Okay, here is a box.h. The top window is box.h. The uh, button is, is the driver. So you can see that this is, this is a code. I sh in fact, it's the same code I showed you last time. You define call, let me, let me just show this one. Okay, so it is, a, it is a private area and a public area. I, I just want to tell you that the private area, essentially anybody outside can access. Um, but, um, what you can do, but it's related to your detailed implementation. And then the public area is those functions. So you can see that we have three member function in the public area. There are two constructor. By the way, if you see a function name is box, that means it's a constructor. Constructor means that when you create an object, that is the function you're going to ask for that creation because you need to initialize some variable or do certain things. Okay, we'll, we'll see box.cpp. Uh, then you will see how those two functions, the three functions. So there are two functions. One is box, uh, sorry. There, there are um, two constructor. One constructor take three argument. One constructor take no argument. In fact, over here, we, we already see some kind of concept for overloading, but we're not going to go into detail. And then you have a one function called volume here. It's just a declaration of the member function header without providing any detail about how this is implemented. Okay, obviously, let's look at box.cpp. So here is the implementation. Uh, you can see there are three functions. Of course, you need to say include box.h. So you will note the declaration you just did in box.h. And then you have the first constructor, which takes three parameter. And you have the second parameter, uh, second constructor, which does nothing. It basically is a 
empty constructor, it's an empty default constructor without doing anything. Uh, in fact, you, if you don't define it, it will automatically insert for you because it's, it's a default. And the third one is this, this function, which is the volume, and the volume is uh, just like it is, take no parameter, but it's actually return uh, the, basically kind of three variables together, you return the visa. Okay, so I, as I said, there are two things I want to tell you. Number one, it returned double, okay? Just like a function, but this part is a little bit different. So usually when you define a function, you actually only provide the name of the function. But if you look at this, this is actually a class and then column class. So this is something new for the difference between C and C++ is that if this is a member function of the class, then you have to provide a class name, then to column and then the name. And this will give the linker or compiler to link these things together. If you forgot to put the right class in front of that, it, it won't work, okay? Uh, the other thing you should also notice that earlier we talked about SPD CI, right? SPD column column CI. You know that, now you know the SPD itself, the class name. Class and then column column uh, whatever function you like to call. Okay, any question by just looking at the program? Yes, please. CPP stands for C plus plus. Yeah. By the way, that's also a convention. You don't have to call it. It's just the convention we use CPP to represent the C plus plus program. H is still in full file, but you can actually say uh, well, when I was writing first C plus one program, it used to be uh, if the C program is a it's a lowercase C, if the C plus one is the big capital letter. So so it's just a convention. But today, uh, I think in C plus plus, everybody use CPP. Yeah, just convention. Yeah. Any other question about this program? Okay, let's try to compile. So I, I'm sorry, I'm really, really bad. Oh, what did I do? No. Oh, by the way, the other thing is, if you see this uh, slash slash, that's, that means it's a, it's a comment, okay? Okay, so I have this program. I'm sorry, I'm being rusty. I haven't, I haven't uh, been writing a uh, program of people for a long time. I don't know what to do with it. Anybody can help me? How do I actually get this file turned into S2? Using what? Using GCC. Good concept. Okay, let's try GCC. Okay, use GCC as a GNU C compiler. Box.cpp ex 11. 018.cpp. Okay, let's try to do that. Okay, sorry. Uh, oh, I, I, I have a. I have never tried this. What did I do? Oh, box, box. Sorry. <laughs> See, you, you know how long I haven't been uh, writing program, right? Oh, oh. Okay, doesn't work. I'm in trouble. Okay. Please help me, I'll, I'll get fired if I cannot get this to work, okay? What should I do? All right, we use a different compiler. Let's use something called G++ because in GCC is inside the traditional C, but with C++, we need to use a, another compiler for G++. And the thing is that this is a difference between GCC and G++ GCC can only compile C program, while G++ can compile both C program and C++ program. Okay, if I do this, do you think it will work? Anybody want to give a guess? It won't work. You still get error. Still get error. I actually gave you a hint earlier in my lecture. 
Would anybody, I just want to test whether you fall asleep or you haven't got enough coffee this morning. Which year, I mentioned earlier in my class that you actually you can get bracket initialization. 2011, so which means that almost every few years, they actually change the compiler. So G++, if you don't say anything, it's actually give you a very old version. It's probably all the way to go to 1990 or 1986 or something like that. All right, so I am actually going to do something different. I'm going to say minus STD is equal to C++ 14. 14 means 2014. And I do this, great, I got it. Do you see the difference is that this is a trick in terms of using um, the C++ compiler because the language just keep changing as the programmer or industry feel that this is the feature we want. We really want this bracket initialization, which, which to me, I, I learned C++ in 1986, and I, I feel that, yeah, it's okay. You can define that way, but I have other way to do it. In fact, I have a slide to show you. you. You don't need to use bracket initialization. You can actually still make your program readable and workable. But, but anyway, they picked this. That's why we have to do. So for this quarter, just to let you know, uh, the, the version of a compiler that you should be using is either C++ 11, 14, or 17. I think the newest one is STD C++ 2K, which is, I think is much later, like 2020 or whatever. And it is not as stable as 17, 14, or 11. So, so just, just for this three months, just using, and I, I use 14, but I think you, 11 will work as well. Yeah, 11 works, 17 works. They, they, they don't have other numbers. It's just every three years, they come up with a new, um, new version of the compiler. So, so this, after C++ 11, I think it's okay. Okay, you can try. There's different, you can do a, a Google and then you can find different version of the compiler, okay? All right, good news. So what I got, you expect, you got an eight out. So I will run the program. Stop, slash eight out. You will see that, okay, now first one says box constructor is called. Box constructor, where is that box constructor? Is in under box.cpp. So you can see there are two constructor. One is, is they're both actually interesting. They're both called box, column, column, box. Both the first function and the second function. And, okay, let me ask you the question, okay, because this is important to refresh some of you, the memory of how, how, how you learn programming language, programming in C. Would this be a syntax error in C? When you have two functions, function name are exactly the same. Would this be a syntax error in C? How do I differentiate this? If it's not, by, by the way, the answer is no. It's, it's, that's okay. You can actually define two functions with the, um, the same function name. But the thing is that, how do I differentiate those two functions? Yes. The, the number and the type of the problem, right? So essentially a function, what we call function signature, means that function signature give the compiler information to link to the right function. And the compiler is looking at not just the function name, but look at the return data type, as well as the input argument, or the, the number and data type, of course. If they match, every single one of them. So, so basically it's a function name, return value, return data type, and the input argument data type. If they all match, then they can actually connect. So, so as long as these two function, they difference with each other in one of those three, then we're okay. 
to have. Okay, so, so that, that's called function signature, which is an important concept in, uh, in, in C or C++. So you can see that when I call this function, how does a compiler or linker know which one to call? Is because I actually use bracket initialization with that three variable. So they know, okay, you want to call the first constructor, not the second constructor. And because it's called the first constructor, you see that C dot out, the C out statement got printed out. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, so now you kind of have a concept about the street program, box dot H, box dot CPP, and then uh, the, the driver program, ex 11 a whatever dot CPP, and how it can work together, right? Okay, any question? Yes, please, on the back first. Thank you, yeah, thank you. Can you speak louder? Okay, so there are multiple ways you can get to the terminal. They are different. Uh, we hope the discussion hour as well as our account. But let me very quickly answer your question. If you go to CSIF, when you log in, it's a Linux. It's a Ubuntu, Linux. So you will have the terminal inside this. If you're using uh, MacBook, you will have the same thing. I'm using MacBook. If you're using Windows, then you can install what we call a WSL, Windows Sub System for Linux, which is Microsoft developed, not Linux developed. Microsoft developed a, a bridging between the Windows environment and the Linux environment. And it's better, faster than emulations like virtual machine. Um, very high quality, and by default, it gives you a terminal. You will get this terminal. So you can use terminal in all kinds of platforms. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we can call the other constructor. Let's try to do that. All right. Let me ask your help because, as I told you, I'm a sloppy programmer and I don't know what to do. Okay. Help me, the class. How do I actually invoke the second constructor? It must be constructor means that when I call create an object, right? So, so I'm actually going to do this. I'm going to create another box. Sorry, I have to go down here. I call it another box. Okay, so now what I do between this two to invoke the second constructor. Pardon? Okay, good. I'm using, let's use a bracket initialization looks like this. Means that I have an initialization, but the initialization is nothing, right? Let's try how I work, okay? Let me, let me also change something. So in the second constructor, I also print out another statement. I actually, instead of having an empty one, I do this. Let's do this. So I will say empty constructor call. Okay, so you can see that I actually put in like this, all right? So now let's see if, if I can, um, so let me tell you, I first add a print of statement so I know I actually actually call that uh, second constructor, but this is where I actually try to invoke. I create another object. It's supposed, you can see that it's different. The linker is going to see that, okay, this one, E3 argument, go for the first constructor. This one, nothing, but go to the second. Again, I'm going to compile. still using whatever 17 should be fine okay now i do a dial ah you can see that now there is a second line in inserted box empty constructor right okay did that answer your question 
How about what? Oh, sure. If you call that, that will be, let's, let's actually guess the, the okay. Uh, now I understand your question. Let me actually try to do this. So I will do this, okay? Volume of another box. And then this is going to be another box, right? Uh, sorry, I'm actually going to do, I, I actually directly could do this. Another box dot Okay, like this, got a call. Okay, so anybody want to guess what's the value of that statement? I think the default, right? What's the default? Let's look at the, that's, I think it's in box H. What's the default value? One, right? So one times one times one, it should be one. Okay, let's try to see whether the result is one. Okay, that's that makes sense, right? You can you can do this. Yeah, you can. Uh, yeah. What the time? Uh, it's I don't know actually. It's I don't. Uh, it might be I have to use a different uh, format string to force the um, the variable to actually print out the way I like. So it might be just converted to just get rid of, if you don't say anything like a format string, it will just get rid of all the, all the things after the yeah, floating point. Yeah. But I'm, I'm not going to do that right now because I have other things, but that's a good thing to try. Okay, so computer, computer programming is always, we try to yeah, try if it run and sometimes we got surprised, okay? Yes. Well, sometimes, for example, I decide to create an object and uh, I want to just uh, give some very basic information. So everybody should have this. And then I will let customer to configure what they want to do. For example, uh, I want then, uh, you want to install an air quality sensor, which is actually I was doing uh, when during the forest fire. And I have to provide IP address, GPS location, all this parameter, which is the, the constructor does not need to do that immediately, but then later the customer can provide, okay? All right, I'm gonna move on and then we can, more questions, we can actually answer that, but I really want to go for the next topic. The, the next topic is that you see that I actually have a, Two function, box.h and box.cpp. Um, why do I do this separation? Why do I need to separate between box.h and box.h? Why can I do this? Okay, let me actually do something very interesting. Let me copy box.cpp to box1.cpp, okay? But inside box one dot cpp, I'm going to, I'm going to um, put this two together. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to, I just take the whole thing. And do like this. So I essentially put 
put these two files together, box.h and box.cub together. And so when I compile, I'm just compiled instead of box, I'm actually compiled box1.cpp, it should work exactly the same. It should work exactly the same. So my question to you, I'm really confused. Why do I bother to separate them into box.h, box.cpp? Why can't I just have box1.cpp as a single file? And I just do the same thing. Yes. Can you speak a little bit louder? I know it's, it's hard, it's lower mass. Yeah. The separate program, we have all that data. The separate file. Okay. A separate file will call that. Okay. What do you mean by separate file will call that? Okay, I think you got the, the answer. The, the, the reason is that I actually play a tricks over here because how do I actually compile EX1101A? Because EX1101A, they actually include box.h, right? If you don't have, if you if you combine this to get together, what does that mean? It means that here you have to put box one that's CBP, right? Okay, let, let me actually try to make this a little bit. I know it's a little bit confusing, but this is what I really want to get into. What's wrong about doing like this? Because I don't have box.h. Now I only have a box one. What's wrong with doing something like this? Yes, in the back. I, I can only hear like a 30% about what you say, but I'm guessing you're saying that we will be able to see the inside of the box one. Is that is that what you're saying? Yeah, okay, I, I got 30%. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, we, we should this is this is definitely not your problem. It's just the way we wear masks in the room. Yeah. So there are multiple problems. First problem, it won't compile. If I do this, it won't compile because it has, it has multiple, it will tell me I have a duplicate because I include the, the function. Then I'm actually going to have a duplicate definition for the same. But remember the function signature in box1.cpp and ex11018, whatever.cpp, they actually will refer to the same function because the way you include. So, Separation is important, number one. But I actually can get that to work, you believe me. I can actually still get that to work. But the more important I try to reach the conclusion for today's class is that it violate encapsulation. If you look at the way, when I say what's wrong with including box1.cpp, what's box1.cpp now? It has both the declaration of the class. It also has the implementation of the class. It has both. So essentially, who never want to use this object-oriented design, it will be able to see whatever you have, including your detail, including your um, um, uh, what you call that, maybe some intellectual property inside. And then they can actually do a lot of hacking. I mean, just, just tell you that C or C++ is not a safe language. So even though sometimes you actually try to put 
detect your information using the, the language construct. So if I know the detail, I will be able to figure out the memory address. I'm not S as the variable, so the compiler don't allow me to do, but I actually I will be able to, to do that with a pointer because the object has to be somewhere in memory. And I can actually get to the memory address of the first byte. And I look at the whatever variable you have, I can actually figure out and I can do a lot of things with that. Uh, with that uh, uh. So, so that's something I want to tell you. When you look at the language, the language is not necessarily designed the, perfectly. It has some um, vulnerability. If you use it differently, you make your program to be unsafe and there are, there are situations which is, could be very complicated. Okay, all right. I think I'm going to stop here. Oh, one more thing I want to tell you before. I mean, some of you, most of you probably already know this. The, the way I really like to compile this program is not using one line, G plus plus, whatever. I'm going to show you this concept called separate compilation, which you might or might not have heard about this. But later in this class, we're going to use something called makefile. Makefile simplifies a lot of these things. I want to show you what is uh, um, what we call separate compilation. So separate compilation is, I'm going to compile this two separately. Okay, again, I'm going to compile still using this, but I'm actually going to put minus C. Anybody remember what in GCC, what is a minus C flag is doing? Okay, so just very quick updates. C compiler or C plus compiler has three phases. One is called preprocessor, which handle this pound sign, whatever include, if then. Number two is called compiler, is generate the object file. Number three phase is a linker, it's linking together. So I'm going to do the separate. So you see that the first file is G++. Put a minus C only for that. After I compile, you actually see I generate box.o. I generate, this is the object file. So now I stop. My program, so minus C will actually stop my program uh, G plus plus to link everything together. It only generate this object file. By the way, I have to modify my uh, EX this back. I, I'm going to change this to H, okay? The right version. And the same way I'm going to compile this one. And you can see now I have a two .o file, object file, box.o and ex11018.o. They're both object file. How do I link them together? I say G++ uh, box.o ex11018.o. O, and then generate, let's generate output file called EE, okay, whatever. Okay, so this line is important. I'm actually linking this to the O file and then generate output. I got my program run. Why am I showing you this? What's the advantage of doing this separate compilation? Why do I just use my traditional way to put all the source code together? Yes, the back. I don't have to recompile the whole thing, right? It's just, just I, if I change one of the file, I only compile one of them. I mean, especially if the project is big, like a operating system kernel with maybe um, 20,000 files, that's actually a huge save. What other advantage of doing separation? What other advantage? Let me tell you encapsulation. Again, why? Because now I'm the designer of a box. 
when I give box to other people, I don't have to give box.cpp. All I need to give is box.h and box.o. When you release the software, don't release the source code. Release the object code, because if you have object code in a .h file, box.o, box.h, I will be able to compile ex 11018.cpp. And I will be able to link that together to get it executable without revealing my task. Okay. Does that make sense? So there are two of the main things. One is saving time in software development, but the other thing is provide a, a good encapsulation. All right. All right. So I will see you on Wednesday. And, and by the way, I will go to the discussion hour uh, this afternoon. Okay. Okay, I, I mean there is a VPN issue. I, I will I will share that. All right, sorry, thank you for reminder. Just give me one second.